Welcome, everybody. It's your boy, the Versace Stunner, with another episode of VSW. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is a big one. You got me, the host, Versace Stunner. And Disable Wolf. Disable here, VSW. This is a big one, folks. Like I said, episode 50. It's been a long road, but it's also been a very fun one. Tonight, we got a very special guest calling us in. We'll be expecting that. We're also going to just be, you know, talking about what it's been like, you know, running with the VSW podcast, what we've been going to be doing. And we also got a special announcement. From Disable Wolf, really big news. You'll have to tune in to later in the show or part two to find out. For sure. You know, what a week for wrestling it has been. I have to say the independent scene is killing it. If you watch Limitless Show, it was amazing. Suffer them no fools. Suffer them no fools, I have to say. One of the greatest pay-per-views, you know, that have happened yet this year. You know, you got such great technical wrestlers. On that card now, great and just characters. Characters, too. it's just it's just really entertaining. Um, NCW doing big big things. You know they got their weekly show behind closed doors. A lot of great characters there. I They're, can't wait for Friday night, baby. Friday night, the reunion show. <clears throat> Such a stacked card. Every title on the line. So much greatness coming out of there. I can't wait. For that, so so much, and we'll do recaps and preview shows and all of the fun that we do on VSW, as always, of course. But tonight it's all about the Big Five O and a little bit about what tomorrow is, and that is four two O. You know that's Versace Stone's favorite holiday, but it's also merging with another holiday too. We can talk about it later. That is right, Cryptomaniacs. There is big talks about tomorrow being, you know, the rise of Doge Day. You know, and, and that... To the moon! To the moon is where it will go. And, you know, that can help everybody from, you know, the littlest fans to the greatest superstars. I'm a big crypto person. It's it's something in it for everybody. You could be, you know, just buying penny ones when they first started. And you don't have to really care about it. And, you know, the next couple of years later, you look and you got a lot of money. I think it's great. Wonderful thing to just do. You know, it's better than, you know, a savings account. When you do a savings account, your money's just stagnant. At least this way it's moving. I think it's better than stocks for Sachi. But that's me because I think, yeah, crypto's risky and all. But everything else is too. But... It won't go down to zero or, or crypto will never go bankrupt. No, I mean, they can, let's, let's face it, there's ways of mining it. You're never going to see Bitcoin go backwards. I mean, yeah, you've seen it drop from 50 to 30, but you're never going to see it go back to a dollar. You're never going to see it collapse. That is too far into it now. You know, it's, it's not going to collapse like that. Yeah, you'll see differentials, but not like a stock where it just collapsed. And here we go. We have our guest calling in. Hello. Hello. And that is it. The suplex sweetheart, Isana, calling in tonight on VSW. Indeed. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good tonight. I'm finally home, so it's been a long day. Been a long weekend, I bet, huh? Yes, a very long weekend. I got thrown around a lot this weekend, so... It must be a lot of throwing around, so I guess it balances out. It must be good, though, to be back in the full swing of things. It really, really is. I missed it a lot. Um, We're also here with the same wolf. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Question for you is, uh, what is your favorite promotion to work for? Ooh. Oh, you're going to make me pick favorites. Oh, right off the bat. Woo. He's with the all hard right, questions. Right. I like to ease people in. He goes right with after the hard questions. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Um, I mean, that's really a difficult decision to make because every promotion brings something different to the plate. Um, Like, I could go with the Wrestler's Lab because I always have a blast down there. And they're just such wonderful, wonderful people. Um, I absolutely adore working for them. 
But at the same time, you know, I could say RWA because RWA is where I was born and raised, you know, wrestling wise anyway. Um, you know, that's, that's my origins. And then, you know, this NCW, which is always a great time, um, and full of wild and wacky characters and, uh, plenty of rum and diets after I wrestle. So, <laughs> Um, but you know, there's, there's lucky pro where they have a great women's division is any CW that always takes care of me and I turn around and I take care of them. Um, and there's, you know, proving ground and there's so many, so many companies that I work for right now that I absolutely adore. Definitely. I, um, think I really right, don't know if I could pick one right now. I think it actually is really a good time to be not only just an indie wrestler, but also an indie fan. There is such diversity with the product that's out right now. Like you said, there, there is something is. for everybody. You got, you know, wrestlers lab doing their thing. That's a little so bit I can't different. wait for their weekly episode. So I know that's going to be fun. You got, you know, with NCW doing their own, you know, weekly show, you got, you know, limitless doing their own thing. And like you said, everybody's got brings it a little bit different and brings, you know, a little bit, different talent to the table to build this great pool that we have here in new england yeah no i mean there's just so much going on there's so much good wrestling and you know so i'm not so good wrestling but there is, I, yes. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't really like to um you know i really very rarely talk about you know the bad wrestling on my show i just don't like to give any light to negativity i just think it grows like a cancer it's, when you do that but yeah, um, it's true. twitter's a good example of that because because people that are loyal to one promotion, we see it with the mainstreams all just crap on fans all day and the characters, which I don't like at all. Yeah, no, no, I, I definitely support. I think, you know, there's, there needs to be positivity always in wrestling. We need to support each other and lift each other up. Um, no, and I've, I've been, definitely noticed this. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a hard year. And, you know, there's, you know, there's a tendency to get clicky. In professional wrestling, you know, you're friends with a group of people, and then you, but you're, you know, you're all interacting with each other as professionals, hopefully. Um, but there is definitely a tendency to get clicky, and you know, almost, you know, sometimes it gets a kind of a high school mentality. And I've, I've been very adamant about trying to overcome that and like absolutely just work together to make a better wrestling environment for everyone. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a very important thing. You know, I've seen a lot, you know, after last year's, you know, speaking out movement and all that that cleared kind of the air. I've seen a lot of, you know, promotions writing new, like, you know, rules of conduct and what they want to see out of the locker room and how they want people to act and respect each other. So I think for a long time in professional wrestling, there was really no rules. There was no parameters set. People kind of just went into the locker room with their egos and just kind of just let it all hang out. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you go back to the, the territory days or even, you know, the early aughts, you know, the early 2000s. Um, it was it was kind of every man and or woman for themselves. Um, and I mean, it's still to an extent is, you know, in at the end of the day, we're all independent contractors, independent wrestlers. Um, and, you know, we do have to look out for number one. But at the same time, you know, if if we all work together. Um, and we, we can keep the bad, the, the bad, bad people out. Um, you know, we can't win it all the time, but you know, at least we can try and weed out the worst and you know, every, every step forward is a little bit more and we can start making it a really positive and not so toxic environment. Cause sometimes it can be pretty toxic, unfortunately, it, it can, and, you know, not even just with the wrestlers, even, you know, just with the fans, we see so many, you know, sham accounts on social media of just you know fans trying to get clout by you know chasing you know they got fake profiles they make up stuff about wrestlers that aren't true they go after the the small guys we see it all the time and you know that's just as toxic as it is for the wrestlers as it is for the fans going to shows yeah no it really is i mean i've i've certainly had some people in my inboxes that have said some truly terrible things that i you know, I just try and tune that out and focus on the good fans that are there and supportive and are, you know, you uh, at, at the end of the day, we all we all are in this together. We're all humans. So, you know, just, definitely, you know, definitely. some of us are on the stage. Some of us are, aren't on the stage, but we're all human in the end. We are. And, um, you know, that's, you know, you mentioned one of the promotions you enjoyed working for the, you know, Wrestlers Lab. And, you know, I have to say, you know, they are always promoting a positive message with every tweet. 
that I read. I have to say, you know, I'm really impressed by that because it's not always that you see that often from even just a business standpoint of view. You know, there's always something. They're always trying to push somebody up, make somebody look better. And that's important, I think, for promotions. You know, a lot of promotions get stuck on making themselves look good and forget about, you know, making their talent look great. That's the whole point of a promoter, to push the, you know, to promote their worker. Yeah, no, it really, really is. And honestly, I wish I could get that printed and framed and handed out to every single promoter I've ever worked for. Absolutely. (laughs) It is, though. And I mean, like, you know, that's, you know, when I first started this, you know, whole you know, Versace stoner thing, I came out, you know, because I saw the the way the independent scene was, and I seen, you know, there's something missing here. It's not getting the limelight that it, you know, so much deserves. You know, these guys are putting on the same caliber matches that I'm watching on TV. The only difference is these people aren't on TV. So, you know, I went on a little campaign, and I started, you know, going to the smallest shows possible and to working my way to bigger indie shows and just pushing names out there to people that have never heard it, you know, people on the West Coast, letting them know who's wrestling on the East Coast. I started meeting friends in Ohio, down South, started introducing them to people up North. You know, it's a yeah. big chain process of, you know, wrestling. It's it's absolutely, and, and stuff like what you do is so important because, you know, we, we get very insular in our, you know, the territory days are over, but they're not really over. They're not. Still, I, like, I still think of New England as a strong territory for wrestling. I, you know, defend it with, you know, we've had some of the top talent come out of here. As you've seen, you know, you got Christian Casanova just getting signed. Mm-hmm. August mm-hmm. Gray got signed. MJF got signed. You know, you had multiple other people all the way back you know, from Killer Kowalski's days. Yeah, New England no. is a rich pro wrestling. Anybody that comes out of here is very, very good. So I take that as, you know, when people dig on us and, you know, especially down in Florida, it was a shit show, I'll tell you. I went to WrestleMania. I went, you know, the fans down there are not the fans up here. It's not a family thing. They don't act like family. I just wish, I wonder if you'll agree with me, Isana, but I wish there was some way that we could promote all the indie promotions in New England because a lot of, it's a catapult for, like, if you see on AEW or NXT or whatever, it's a catapult for attention, but... Not only do we have great fans, we can have more in the city. I wish we could get it, like, syndicated in our area. Yeah, no. And, I mean, with the advent of the Internet and everything that it can do, like, I mean, obviously, it has it's a double-edged sword because, you know, you got Twitter and you got Facebook, but you also are able to reach so many more people and all these little companies like NCW, Proving Ground, uh, RWA, um, are able to leverage that in order to get, you know, we have fans, like RWA had fans in Germany. Exactly. And, I mean, you know, all across Europe we had fans. I was telling people the other day, you know, I got cousins in um, England, and I was telling them, you know, about Proving Grounds, and I was showing them the YouTube video of the last, you know, tournament that was on there. You know, before, yeah. back in the day, that wasn't happening. If you didn't live in the area, you didn't know anything about it. You know, even yeah, the magazines no. didn't cover the smaller promotions. Exactly. Like, you know, then, I mean, it, it worked out in a way for some people because you could put on, you could put on the same match every night and no one would know. <laughs> yeah. um, and that made life really easy. But, you know, the, the ante has definitely been upped a lot. You know, now with the ad and the internet, you got to, you got to put on a, a top level match every time you get out there. Well, maybe not a top level match every time you go out there. Sometimes you're just out there to tell a story. Yeah. And definitely. you know, as long as, as long as you're telling a story, that's what's important. Um, you know, the, at the end of the day, we're, we're just here to, to, to move people and to make people feel something. So. Exactly. One way or the other, whether it's through performance or just, you know, good mic work or, you know, just good promotional work. It always is. The storytelling is really what drives, I think, the wrestling, you know, past, you know, what makes it a sport and into the entertainment part, of course. But it also is what gives, you know, fans their passion, you know. Hearing a good promo can get, you know, can make your day turn from mud to great if, you know, it's an inspirational one. Or, you know, your worst enemy can make you mad when you hear them, you know, talk on the mic. The mic work, you know, is really important, I think, in wrestling and overseen in some places. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think it's kind of, it's, it's making a comeback now. Like it, back in like the nineties and stuff, like mic work was super important. And then it kind of overshadowed 
And I think now it's starting to, people are miss it and they're starting to, to want more of that. Um, you got some and great also, people you know, it's, on the mic. oh yeah, no, I mean, you got some fantastic people that, and honestly, there's some people that, at least in New England that I know of that are, you know, super underrated. Um, you got like Mike Montero, who is a fantastic wrestler. And honestly, like he just shoots from the hip when he cuts a promo. He does. Um, I, you know, I watch a lot of his stuff on Facebook and, you know, his RCW stuff and all of that that he's done. And he's definitely one of the people I could think of, like, definitely underrated top talent that just doesn't get the exposure. He's got the yeah. skills. He's got everything there. It's just it's just that exposure is missing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, he's, he's so talented. And then, you know, people people sleep on him. And I, I honestly think this is going to be his year to break out. Like, he's been pushing himself uh, beyond. Like, I mean, he's always, pushed, he's always pushed the envelope. But now he's, like, really been pushing himself and focusing like he... You know, he just turned 30 uh, yesterday, the day, before, yeah, the day before yesterday. So, um, you know, he's, you know, his time is ticking. And, you know, obviously he it could is. still have another 20 years in wrestling if he does it right. But Yeah, now I feel like wrestling has become like the other sports. You can definitely stretch it a lot longer. It's not like in the 80s where, up oh, 30 and out. People yeah, People are definitely exactly. stretching it a little bit longer today. Um, um, and there's more with health and safety compared to in the 80s and 90s where you had to basically take peds to get noticed yeah that's the other thing. yeah no absolutely um you know we we i i so it's kind of a it's a touchy subject but the whole the whole thing of kayfabe like i when i got into wrestling it was after the era of kayfabe yeah um i got into wrestling through the indies i didn't i didn't come up with wwe i started on the indies and fell in love with independent wrestling because i really liked the idea of being able to interact with these people like these are normal human beings that then turn around and do superhuman things in the ring and yeah. then i could just talk to them afterwards like it's you know i i never was, never was interested in these superstars on tv that i would never in a million years interact with except maybe at a you know a paid signing or something like exactly. I was like oh yeah that's cool but whatever but when they're real people, that that's what moved me. Um, so I came up without kayfabe. Like kayfabe was not a thing for me, and I kind of think, at least in my opinion, I like it better because I can tell. You know, I I'm able to suspend my disbelief even as a wrestler myself. If it's a good match, I will get completely lost in it, and I will just be like rooting for the babyface and booing the heel without even realizing what I'm doing. Um, so it's almost kayfabe on auto there. Yeah, it, 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 you know, a good match, it doesn't matter whether, and then, you know, afterwards I can be like, you know, I can turn around and be like, you know, that heel that I was just booing, wow, what a guy. He's actually a super sweetheart in real life. Yeah, I think, <laughs> you know, it, it definitely, I think you're right. You know, I'm, I'm a couple of generations behind or maybe a generation behind. I'm not really sure. I'm not going to age myself, but I <sighs> came up with WWE just because there wasn't really an independent scene in New England at the time. It was very, very small. Um, I did, you know, came up through territorial wrestling, WCW, all that fun. And then I stopped. I stopped completely. I got to an age and I was just done. Um, you know, the Attitude Era had ended. I was graduated and off to college. And, you know, the spark of wrestling was just gone. The, it was PG Era. Bore, bore, bore. Sleep for me. You know, I just yeah. couldn't get into it. You know, my childhood heroes, yes, you know, it was great back then watching Hulk Hogan rip his shirt when I'm five. But... You know, now I'm 20. It's not so much interesting for me to see an old man rip his shirt and so forth and so on. And, you know, and it wasn't until like maybe, you know, a good eight years after that, you know, I, I started to watch the independent scene. And I had that same kind of thing that you were talking about. You know, I fell in love with the fact that, A, I could go to these shows, you know, without having to, you know, you know, sell my house. Yeah. But I could, you know actually interact with the stars afterwards i could say hey i appreciate you you know and you know i could appreciate your work i could see how you did you know i could take pictures of them i can support them by buying a shirt i can you know buy an autograph i can talk to them like that you like you said they're human beings that k fob goes down for you know 15 minutes that that scary heel is you know shaking your hand and saying thank you yeah and, no, it's, and i think that's fine right now in the way that the world is i don't think we need that, you know, 24-7, you 
you know, pretend to be somebody else, get lost in our, you know, role. Because I think, you know, at the end of the day, we all know who we are individually. We all know that, you know, you all know you're going to have to do a job when you go out there. I do the same when I'm on my podcast. I do the same, you know, when I'm on social media. I'm a per- I have a character to play. Is it based on me? Yes. Part of it is me. Some of it's not. But most of mm. it is me. Exactly. But, you know, when I'm done with that and I'm talking to people, I, I'm like, that's just, you know, what I do online. That's just, you know, part of my job. That's not, you know, that's not me. I'm still, you know, me. And I think now wrestlers are seeing that today. You know, you don't have to be in that gimmick twenty four seven to be a to be a star. You don't have to lose yourself. You can be both people. You can be one. You can be that star and yourself at the same time. Absolutely, That's absolutely. What I'm trying to get into. You don't have no. to pick that one or the other. Where before you did, you know, you would have guys wouldn't even hang out with each other because they were afraid they would be seen. Exactly. I remember uh, I was at an Al Snow seminar one time, and you discussed how he would he would go out to dinner after the show, and he would bring the head with him, um, and stay. You know, get get the head a, a, a chair at the at the table, and you know, go through the whole motions. And you know, if if someone else was you know that he like someone you know someone that he was a, you know had a thing with wanted to go to that same restaurant, like he would start a fight in that restaurant just to keep it alive and now we don't we don't really need to do that we're we're at a point where i think people appreciate um they appreciate the art for what it is and you know honestly i don't think i would appreciate it as much if i didn't know it was an art Uh, yeah if i thought it was just a regular fight like boxing or you know um mma i would have you know i would obviously appreciate you know the, the physicalness of it but I don't mm. think I would look at it as an art. And wrestling is an art. It's if you don't, you know, it's the same as a dance. It's the same as any other piece of it's art you put together. Everything you love. If you are a sports fan, you can relate to wrestling. Obviously, like Goldberg was a former football player. And at the mm. same time, it's like people give us crap for liking something that's fake. But a dragon's real in Game of Thrones. Exactly. You know, exactly. To it's, me, when I watch a match, I look at it like it's like a music video. You got a bunch of pieces of different things coming all together to make something for you know five to ten minutes or whatever it is the job. time that's going to just bring you out of reality for a couple of yeah. seconds and get you into another world. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be there forever, though. Yeah. No. It's that's the beauty of it. Like a well executed match will completely suck you in. And honestly, even a even an okay executed match will probably suck you in pretty well. Um, you know, obviously a, a not so well executed match, you're very sitting outside of it. But you know, you can't win every time. No, but I mean, you know, matches are going to happen. That's just the nature of the game. Nobody is perfect. Nobody's perfect. You know, even you know, even the the best will mess up sometimes, and sometimes they'll fall flat. Like they'll they'll shoot for the stars and they just won't make it. But you know, most of the time, it's all it takes is just a little bit of willingness to be like, all right, all right. You know, you, at first, maybe the first match, you're like, oh, this is a little hokey. And then you're like, but but this is fun. And then by, by match two or three, you're completely absorbed into the whole thing because it's just the nature of the beast. And you've got that, you know, the crowds. You know, well, hopefully, you know, if you're watching with a crowd, you know, that not necessarily a mob mentality, but the the crowd kind of carries you with, like, it's almost like on a wave. It does. Um, You know, like, when I first went to NCW, I had no idea the roster. I had no idea the talent. I had no idea who the fans were. I just went in there and just followed along. And, you know, by the end of it, I knew just about everything that was to be known about that night. Who's who? You know, fans were even telling me who's who. People were talking to me. It was like I was at a family union rather than, like some kind of weird sports event. Yeah, no, that's one of the things I love about NCW is it's it's such a family atmosphere, you know, and not necessarily in the, the child-friendly sense, but... No, no, you know, not even bombs. like in the residence. This is like when you walk in there, you feel like you're at home. Exactly. And I mean, you know, it's the same thing in the locker room as it is, you know, the fans, the locker room, everything about that company. Um, it's very, very much a family. Like, we... So like I'll, I'll walk out there on intermission and I'll be like, oh, hey, hi, hey, hi, hey, hi. Like, I know I've all the faces. It's great. Yeah, you start to, you know, I've seen you quite a few times. But after the, you know, the third time seeing me, you're probably like, oh, I've recognized him. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, speaking of NCW, so, you know, 2020, we got that, you know, great season opener. It was, you know, you had the ballroom blitz, all the fun and jazz. Next day, the world shut down. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> How did that impact you? I mean, what do you do then? Um, honestly, I, um, well, for a while, I did a lot of baking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, no, I just, yeah, it, it was really tough. It was, it was so sudden. And I was just kind of watching all these, you know, I had a bunch of big opportunities that were coming up. And I just was watching them all melt away. And it was breaking my heart. And I was just like waiting for this to end, thinking, you know, hoping and praying it wouldn't be long. <laughs> And just plotting and plotting and plotting. And then I kind of realized after about a month that we were in it for the long haul. Um, that this was not something that was going to go away anytime soon. Uh, and, you know, so then it kind of became a bit of, you know, how can I maintain my momentum? You know, I started thinking about different ways of, of keeping up with content. Uh, and then, of course, my life kind of fell apart personally. Um, my uncle passed away and I, unfortunately, was the one that found him. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Um, my grandfather so, passed away too, three weeks after the pandemic. So I know how you feel. Uh, yeah, it's it's so hard. And then you know all the things that came with that, uh, taking care of my family, um, taking care of the property, everything that like real life really kind of jumped up and slapped me in the face. On top of a um, pandemic, on top on of top it all. of a pandemic, exactly. So I, it was almost you know I, I'm not going to say it was a good thing that I didn't have wrestling. But it, I think I would have been very, very, very overwhelmed. It might have been too much. If it would definitely have been too much to, you know, because we're, we were cleaning out my grandparents' house where my uncle had lived. Um, we were doing all this stuff, you know, for, for the family, you know, taking care of all the paperwork and everything. And it just would have been so overwhelming to have, you know, be working a full-time job and wrestling as almost a full-time job. And then taking care of all the family stuff. So it was, it was, I mean, it wasn't a blessing, but it was in a way. Things um, but now that we're coming work, back, things like. Things work. But yes, now I was going to say, you know, you got through all that. You persevered. You know, we saw you again now on Behind Closed Doors last week. You yeah. Know, you, great matchup. And now was, we see you announced for the, this year's, um. You know, ballroom blitz. Room blitz. Yeah, it's going to be happening this Friday. So that's yes, kind of exciting Friday. now. So we're almost back to where it kind of was, you know, before things were going. Obviously, there's no fans at this show. Mm. I do like how there's a lot of NCW employees making it seem like there's fans in a small space. So, so it's not completely yeah. empty. No, I mean it's so important to have that. Like as a wrestler, you you kind of thrive off the feedback of you know of of the group of the crowd um and when there's no crowd i mean don't get me wrong i've wrestled in front of no crowd before and that was pre-pandemic um but you know it it's so important to have that feedback it's 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 almost you know like it guides the match so to speak especially when Um, you're focusing and you're focusing on your opponent and all you have is your audio if you don't hear that noise and you don't you don't know if you're doing good, bad, what's going on? Exactly. Like you just you you know, and it energizes you to hear, you know, when they when they cheer for you. Like that's that's why I wrestle, honestly, is is to hear people react for me. There's nothing um, better than a reaction if you're super over or super hated by uh, fans. I just think it's a great both feeling are, the crowd so both are the best. I mean, you know, I whenever the, the match with you and um in Sierra, there. In the Ooh, one, I was there with you. You were there with man. me. The one that got with the chair and the, you rolled it up in the carpet. <laughs> I mean, we had you had the fans there going wild. Oh, that was so much fun! So much fun. You know. Um. There was God. A lot of stale chairs too. I remember. Oh yeah. yeah. That was one. No, of that, the, that was a wild match for an NCW show, and I think even the fans. But the fans were into it. Everybody was into it. Yeah, no, we had that was that was a, probably my, one of my fa- uh, probably one of my favorite moments of that year was that that match. Um, and certainly one of my favorite NCW moments. We just we just had so much. You know, I was just breathing that energy in the room. Oh, uh, and it it was making me high almost. Like it was great. 
Yeah, that, um, like, that almost euphoric high that you can get from just the crowd reaction. Like, I, I, when I first, first started wrestling, I would tell people, like, you know, because, you know, a lot of people that didn't understand wrestling would be like, why do you do it? And I was like, this, I literally have, like, this whole room full of people in the palm of my hand. Like, I can make them laugh, I can make them cry, I can make them angry, I can make them happy, all through whatever I choose to do. Like, you know, and, you know... I, I would joke with people. I'd be like, you know, as a woman, I love manipulating emotions. So, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's it's that you know, it's all that aspect of theater. But at the same time, it's live and in person. So, like, you know, if if it's not, you know, it's, as opposed to theater, you have lines that you have to read. Like, yeah. I'm reacting in real time to what's going on, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying to kick ass, take names, and at the same time give like the best experience i can and it's it's such a wild one of the wild ride it sounds to be and then with all that power though do you find comes like a, a lot of responsibility like to always be doing the right thing because people are looking up to you you have you know kids adults people that are fans that are going to be watching you, what you do and look up to you and say hey i want to be like isana yeah no and honestly like one of my favorite parts of wrestling now is you know having these little girls come up and be like i saw Anna, you're so awesome i you know watched her you kick her butt and you know seeing these young girls that have been empowered by you know watching what i do and being like you know it's cool like it's cool to be strong and it's cool to be tough and it's cool to stand up for yourself it's awesome because um, back in the day when i started watching wrestling obviously the attitude era was a great era don't get me wrong i loved all the hilarious skits but I like to see women actually wrestle like they've been main eventing. WrestleManias have their own characters, not just be the stereotypical, like, uh, barroom characters, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, when I first started getting, like, when I first got into wrestling and actually started paying attention to it, um, it was still, like, it, was, it wasn't the Attitude Era at all. But, you know, they, they, the women's revolution hadn't happened yet. And there was still a lot of, like, cat fight stuff when, with, with women's Hello matches. Fights. And I would just roll my eyes it's like nah i'm um, here to fight i want to fight and I, I mean and i think i mean i know you're one of the women that do i've seen you do a few intergender matches i know it's not mm -hmm. for all women or all men but how yeah, do you like no. doing them because you do them uh, well and like and i think on my personal opinion when an intergender match is done well it's one of the best things in the world when it's done yeah. wrong it's one of the worst things and you do them absolutely great. so how no, do you it's... enjoy them it's it's one of those things. Where it's a very very fine line that you walk when you do an intergender match. It's I I actually I was just doing a, a podcast with uh, NECW mm -hmm. Sheldon Goldberg, uh, Kevin mm -hmm. Castro, and uh, Joe Matarazzo, mm -hmm. and that was something we talked about. Um, is intergender wrestling, and you you really have to be very careful because it's it's so easy to fall into tropes. It's so easy to cross a line and just. That you can't come back from where it just turns everybody off. You're like, wow, I'm just watching, you know, if, you know, if you don't show enough fight, you know, then it's, it's just a massacre and no one likes that. But at the same time, it's, it's a really cool way to tell a story of like, you know, there every, you know, I, and I think a lot of guys hate to hear the idea that women can be strong. Um, cause it, it kind of scares them. <laughs> it does. I, I'm but, sure it does. You know, it, it definitely kind of scares me sometimes. Me, but if I were a wrestler, I would love to do intergender. I love watching it in the indie scene. Like Beyond Limitless does a great job with this. So does NCW. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, is that I wouldn't be. I wouldn't care if I was booked to lose. This is me. I would be afraid if I botch and I hurt a girl. I would have to live with that. Yeah, and it's it's a very real risk. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I tell people all the time that you got to remember that we're, you know. I agree. Like I tell people, they're like, "Well, I don't like seeing a guy, you know, rough up a girl." I'm like, "Well, you know, no one forced me to do this. I can walk away at any time." This, yeah, it's a I predetermined say, I can, match. You know, this until is... that bell rings, I can say no. Um, no, obviously, once that bell rings, then it's every person for themselves. But you know, me being the person that I am, and the character that I am, and the build that I am. Um, you know, I can generally hold my own for the most part. You know, I'm, I'm I, I, stronger I, than your average. To bear, be honest so. with you, I don't see too many people trying to shoot with you once the bell rings. 
I just don't uh, see would, it going that way. You would be way. surprised. You would be surprised. <laughs> but um, yeah, some people try, um, and sometimes I'll, I sometimes I even let them get away with it. But eventually, it will come back to bite them. Um, yeah. Because I, I am, I am obviously a sweetheart, and that that part is very, very real. Um, yeah, for the most part, anyway. You know, as I probably saw my Facebook post. You know, if you ask ten people what I am, nine people will say I'm a sweetheart, and one person will say I'm a blank, uh, and they'll all be right. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, with with intergender matches, it really is about how you tell that story um and i i love playing with it i love seeing how far i can push the envelope i mean you and, lust, too far. you and steven lust do a tremendous job i think him entering the last oh. ballroom blitz was perfect you know he was like why can you enter and he wanted to enter and i think he does a really good job playing the role that he plays he puts his ego aside when he does it oh yeah no he's he is absolutely hands he's a very underrated uh wrestler as well like people you know, people don't give him the credit that he deserves. No, and I'm know. hoping to see more of him now that he's not, you know, not, you know, granted, I love Middlesex Express. They were a great tag team, but I'm, I'm loving also seeing, you know, PDAC on his solo side. And I'm looking forward to seeing Lust more on his solo side. Yeah, no, and there's going to be a lot more coming up. I can guarantee that. Um, he's, he's just so, and he's, it, working with him is so much fun. Because I like, you know, he's he's not afraid to get his hands dirty, but he's not afraid to get thrown around either. You know, he's he's willing to he, he's very good at, as we say, showing ass on um, both literally and figuratively, might I add. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's, you know, he's he's not afraid to look a fool because he knows that he can back it up. You know, he's actually a wicked tough guy. Um and he can really hold his own. And, you know, I've, I've seen him get into literal fights with people. And, you know, and I, I, not in a wrestling sense, but in a, a shoot yeah. sense. Um, and he can hold his own. Um, so that, you know, he's, he's so confident in himself um, that he doesn't, you know, he doesn't worry about looking like a fool sometimes. You know, some guys don't want to look like, like a fool and yeah. that I think that kind of holds them back sometimes. I think, you know, and as, as the mm. years go on, I think that's going to start to break away, hopefully. Mm. Where guys stop feeling that kind of, like, shame. Because, first of all, let's figure it out. I mean, if we're breaking away the KFOB, you're not really getting beat by another woman. Or vice yeah. versa, if you're getting rid of the KFOB. Second of all, let's face it. If the person's better than you, regardless of their sex and gender, race, whatever it is, they're better than you. They're going to beat you no matter what. Yeah, I mean, you know, you put me against um, Harry Brooks, for instance. Uh, that match where I threw him against the guardrail. <laughs> Feel bad about that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, that was that was real. Like he didn't, you know, he didn't jump for that. I picked him up and threw him. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you put me against someone that's you know 120 pounds, 130 pounds, 140 pounds. You know, I pick that up for breakfast. Um. So I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it, it's real, you know, and people are like, oh, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. Oh, they jumped for you. Not, not necessarily. Like, I mean, there's been times people when. People rarely get injured. No, a bump is a you bump. Know? And I mean, I've been bumped. Bump is a bump. You're going to, you're going to feel that when you're getting thrown oh, yeah. around, you're getting thrown around. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people are sore this weekend. Oh, I know. I woke up sore as hell. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more sore people coming as the months go on because of it. Um, you know, ring oh, rust yeah. is a really real thing. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely, you know, a lot of people are coming back. Some people manage to weather it better than others. Um, you know, I know that I definitely need to get more ring time and get you know back into real ring condition because you know without a ring, there's there's no way you can. No, you, you know, not you same. can do all the cardio at the gym you want. You can run for miles. You can, you know, you can pick up weights all you want, but nothing compares to being in a ring and wrestling. Yeah, you have to hit the ropes. You have to you know, do what you got to do in there. It's not going to be the same. You're not going to get the same training or workout or feeling. Yeah, no, there's there's nothing like it. It is the most because you're if you think about it, you're you're lifting and running and trying to think all at the same time. 
And, you know, that that takes a lot out of you. Oh, yeah, um, the mental exhaustion plus the physical physical exhaustion just leaves you empty, I'm sure, by the end of it. Yeah, no, like, you know, you get in the back and you're, you know, once the adrenaline wears off, you're just like, wow, wow, I need a nap and I need it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, and then, of course, you get to drive an hour and a half, two hours home, so good luck with that. Yeah, that's, but, the, that's the downside of the independency. Nobody's flying you out or in. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes uh, yes. I'm not going to say never. I've seen some, I've heard stories and I've seen things. And I've gotten offers for people that have asked me if I wanted to fly certain other wrestlers out other to other promotions. Um, yeah. It does happen, but for the norm, most people just like the carpool, it seems. Yeah, no, and honestly, you know, anything anything within a day's drive, I would rather just drive than deal with the hassle of an airport. Yeah, especially so. nowadays, especially nowadays. Um, <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're just about out of time. We do thank you for calling and talking to us. Um, we really appreciate it. Like I said, we're huge fans. We're looking forward to seeing you. Can't wait till the ballroom blitz. On Friday. Oh, boy. Yeah, the ballroom blitz. And you know, I, we I pride and joy. NCW, we're going to be looking out for you in the lab when they, we've been, I've been watching anyways, when they're going to be releasing their new content every day now I look. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, there's a lot coming on. Um, PG's doing tapings, NCW's doing tapings, Restless Lab's doing tapings. you got Proving um, Grounds as well, right? Yeah, yeah, there. Uh, I just did a taping yesterday for Proving Ground, so that'll be coming out soon. And uh, let me tell you, you know, I mean, my match, my match was good, um, but the, some of the matches on the card are incredible. So that's something like it's top to bottom. The entire the entire taping was so solid. I'm so glad I I went and got to experience it live. Um, but yeah. definitely do not miss that. Yeah, you never can honestly. You never can sleep on Proving Ground. They always seem to surprise somehow. Yeah, no, Proving Ground is just you know. And that's it's, another promotion I feel like is like a family too, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It is 100% a family. Um, we, we love like a family. We fight like a family. Um, that's what it's all about sometimes. It really is, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah, no, there's a lot coming out. Um, I know there's a couple other companies that are, are putting feelers out for tapings. Um, so we'll see what happens, but this, this, you know, wrestling will be back and it's, it's coming back slowly. Well, that's um, exciting I know, to hear. We've been waiting for it. Yeah, no. And hopefully, you know, maybe in the summer there'll be some outdoor shows, some live stuff. So we'll, we'll just have to see what the summer holds. Fingers crossed everyone gets their vaccine and we can do this thing. I know Absolutely. I've gotten mine, so I'm waiting for the day they say we can go. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Suplex, Sweetheart, Isana. We thank, thank you for having you. you on the VSW. And hopefully we can have you again back soon. And everybody that's listening, please tune in. NCW this Friday night for the reunion show. Good stuff please, happening. it's going to be good. Support the wrestlers, too, in NCW. Virtual pay-per-view. You can't get beat that. No. No, you cannot. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I really had a blast tonight. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Have thank a good you, night. Thank you, Isana. Take care. Bye. We may be almost done, but part two of our VSW 50 episode, we'll start talking about Doge. We're going to shoot the shit with Michael Pantu asking questions from uh, wrestling as we are folk, but we're expanding to another focus, and I'll give you a preview of my big announcement on part two. That's right, folks, so stay tuned. We're not going anywhere just yet. BSW episode 50 part 2 coming at you almost immediately to be continued. Versace out. Disable 